Okay, lovely. We figured out how to find Ka. Um, what the heck does that do for us? Well, now is the time to relate that equilibrium constant to actual concentrations. So let's let's get on that. So Ka, um, our equilibrium condition is as shown here. Ka negative delta G T over RT. Um, note, I'll just remind you, if you want to change the temperature, you can't just alter T in the equation. You actually have to change the delta G as well. It is also temperature dependent, and we don't know how to do that yet. So right now, we are stuck at the standard state, which is 298K, and that's okay. We'll hang out here for a little bit. Then you also recall Ka is defined as uh, this, this set of multiplied by each other uh, activities raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, uh, which is the same thing as saying it's uh, fugacity divided by its standard state fugacity raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. And you're like, oh, okay, that's great. Um, I seem to recall fugacity has something to do with concentration, um, as does activity. And you're right. Yay. So you remember that these have um, uh, are related to mole fractions, right? I go back and look. Um, a thing that I always thought is kind of mind-blowing and you should think is really pretty awesome, because I think it's really pretty awesome, is that this activity and this fugacity are the same ones we were working with uh, a couple weeks ago in vapor liquid equilibrium. They're not different things. Like it's still the same activity or fugacity. So we can still, for example, if we wanted to like break out the Margoules equation and come up with an activity. Um, that may or may not be the most appropriate model to use. So let, let's talk about uh, how we want to go about this. So let's say um, you have a vapor phase reaction. Well, if we're working with the vapor phase, it is most convenient to think in terms of fugacity, that second way that this is written. And uh, let's remember a few things. Uh, in our textbook, it just selects what the standard state fugacity is for all things, and it's one bar. Remember, fugacities have uh, pressure units, so that's just like always true. So the bottom of that equation is just going to be one bar. It's going to pretty much disappear. We're not going to pay attention to it a lot. Um, and if we have in the gas phase an ideal solution, um, we could also maybe have an ideal gas. So let's start with ideal solution. If we have an ideal solution in the gas phase, then Fi hat uh, ideal solution is Yi times P times that thing, which is the, the fugacity coefficient. And you get that from a model, like maybe Ping Robinson, something like that. Um, but you recall when we were working with vapor liquid equilibrium that all the weird tended to come in from the condensed phase. That most of the time, if you did an ideal gas model, like that was just fine because all the big deal interactions were on the liquid side. So, and keeping in mind, we are only talking about gases at the moment. In general, if we are kind of at low pressures and don't have an expectation that stuff is going to be changing phase, we can go. Ideal gas. We're going to go ideal gas. We're going to go hard ideal gas. And in that case, uh, our fugacity is going to be Yi times P, which we know and love and are really familiar with. So in that case, ideal gas, uh, we say Ka is equal to pi. Remember, that's this multiplication thing. All of the Yi's each raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. Uh, and then that times, you end up with pressure times the sum of all of the new i's. Okay, and that's, that's what we've got. 
So we are going to use this when we have a gas phase reaction. And the thing that is beautiful is a, a whole heck of a lot of reactions are gas phase. It's a pretty common way for things to work out. Now, as you know, not everything is in the gas phase, right? Uh, so again, here we are, Ka is defined as the uh, pi activity to the new i. Uh, so if we are working with a liquid phase reaction, this is this is what we're working with. This is we can just solve it like this. Um, so if it's easier for you to think about it that way, uh, we could have we could rewrite this as pi gamma i x i together raised to the new i power. And if we have ideal solution, what's gamma i? Gamma i equals one. And therefore, we just end up with uh, the multiplication of all of the x's raised to all of the news. So I've always kind of liked liquid reactions because in liquid reactions, you are uh, most often, uh, you know, you don't have this pressure term that you got to worry about. It's just the x's or the x's times the gammas raised to the new. So that's that's really nice. Um, yay. So we can do that. Uh, now, another thing that happens is you have a mixed phase reaction. So you have, right, like imagine, I, you probably did this in Orgo Lab. You have some, uh, that's a tube, and it's bubbling a gas through a liquid, and our reaction is kind of happening on the interface, or things are changing phase as they react. And so that's interesting. So can we just like use half of one, half of the other? Eh, not so much, because you have to be doing um, simultaneous vapor liquid or solution uh, equilibrium calculations and reaction. So you need to uh, worry about, for example, uh, the whole fugacity equals fugacity uh, between the vapor and the liquid while we also have to solve uh, the reaction. So this is a tricky thing, and we're not going to do that by hand. We're going to set this up uh, if and when we ever set this up uh, with the help of a computer because we end up with a large number of simultaneous equations. So uh, for the moment, if we think back on our current example, the creation of syngas from methane and steam, uh, we're going to be in the vapor phase. So we're going to concentrate pretty hard right now on the vapor phase. 